Hello and welcome to chat another season of uh, From the Backyard to the Top. So in this episode, was the first one for the sixth season here, our third season in League 2. Got very close to, to promotion last year, but it was not to be for us, so hopefully this is the year for us. So let's get into the game. As I said, this is the preseason, so we have quite a few things to go through before we start. Starting with transfers, obviously, because this happened a lot. We can go through our... Well, these are out, but let's go through our released players first. So quite a few players have been released, um, well, not offered new contracts. Finley Armstrong hasn't found a club yet. Owen Haskett signed for Bristol Rovers. Been with us for three seasons. Played a lot of games. Uh, started a lot in our last season in National League. Started a lot the sec uh, first season in Skybird League 2 as well. Last year didn't start that much, mostly came in from the bench. And he wanted to have a more of a... What should I say? He wanted to be more involved, I suppose. A bigger role in the club that I couldn't offer him at the time. Um, tried to sign him anyway, but... Decided to, to let his contract run out at the end of the day. Sam Gibson came to us uh, pretty early on, 2.9k. We were in National League, was on loan in the coming season after that. He did well, went back to us in League 2, had like... He played a lot for us the first, first season in League 2 actually. Was out on loan last year. Didn't play anything, apparently. So, came back here and now his contract is over and he hasn't found a new club yet. Barry Bagley, been in the club, uh, well, came 14 15, played nine games for us that year or that season. Uh, last year he was on loan in Turkey. Only did five games for them in uh, National League South. They're still there. No, they're not. They actually advanced to to um, National League. But now he signed for Spennymore. He used to be our biggest rival when we were down in National League North. Fierce rivals, as you can see here in Darlington. But not much of a rivalry going on right now as they are in the National League North and we're in League 2, but... He signed for them anyway. He's played one game so far. Really good two assists from him there, so... Nice to see him get some... Something going his way. He's only 24 years old, so... He has, he has a... Br well, a bright future, I don't know. Might have a good future anyway in, in the football. Josh Hanlon came like last year or something like that, two years ago. He actually flashed on cash on him. Didn't really do much. There was like 8k throwing that in the river. Then Kane Felix, been here for many, many years. He's been here from the first season I was here. He's been a solid provider for us. For Mainly so in the first season, but has been solid after that as well. He's been a starter. He was a starter for a long time. 35 games here, 10 goals in National League. Second season in National League also. First choice, 11 goals done. Up to League 2. Started 23 games. So. And last year he was more of a sub for us. Six starts, 14 subs, two goals. I, I rather have him stay on, but he didn't want that, so here we are. 
Aaron Jarvis came in as um, well, a compliment striker to Mark Beck. 24-25. Only scored two goals in those ever was 17 appearances. I was out on loan all last year. Was a big provider in in um, uh, National League North for um, Gateshead. They didn't um, they didn't go up though, but he did take them to playoffs. Then returned and now is without a club. He's twenty eight years old. You should I don't want to sign him necessarily. <laughs> Any interest? Doesn't seem like anyone is interested in them. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Ross Sherry, just a, a youngster with no future here. And John Roney was sitting on a big contract. Big contract, but not much contribution. 13 games was okay, but it didn't really wasn't really worth the, the money we were paying for him. So. He's out on free now. Any interest? In interests? No, nothing. He's 35 years old. So, yeah, so those are the players that we didn't renew contracts with. So now let's go to the transfers. Aside from them, we sold Finlay Harford Lockett. Came last year from Bolton. It's been three years on loan. Well, two years alone, I guess. He can't really be loaned out to, him, to, to themselves, can he? Was in Halifax in National League 23-24. And in Carlisle last... No, not last year. Last year was here, but the year before that. And last year was when we signed him. Yeah, 29 games, 7 goals, 2 assists. Was okay. But... Was more I I thought of him more as um as a backup really this season, but he didn't really want that, so we sold him off for twenty k to Southend in National League. Be interesting to see how he does there. Aaron Marshall going out on loan, the young prospect to Grizzly Grizzly, I don't know National League North anyway. Haven't played anything yet, but it's gonna be interesting to see how he fare there. Chiyoki Uda goes out on loan again. One of our bigger talents was in Wales last year. Yeah, he has well, this is the same season he has said had a loan spell and then they just gave him an extension there, put him to 22 games in total, three goals, one assist. Wasn't super good there. Are back in England now in National League North in Warrington. Be interesting to see if he's gonna be a main man for them. Did start the first game here on the left wing. It's gonna be interesting to see what he can do in Warrington. They are predicted somewhere in the middle, a little lower than middle, I suppose, but. So that's kind of the people that we have gotten rid of. All those releases, then Finlay Harport Lockett sold, and then those two loans on Marshall and Ude. And what have we taken in then? First off, we did sign Brett McGavin from Southend. It's gonna be our. Well, thought, yeah, I thought of him as our new kind of. The Arthur Egan role. Um, a little bit better than Arthur Egan, but our creative force on that midfield. Been in Southern for three years, they bought him for 75,000 from Turkey. It's an Ipswich um, product from. That's where he started off. Didn't really play for Ipswich, but played one game for Ipswich in League One. Went on loan to Concord, went on loan to Ayr. Or they probably sold in the Turkey then National League. Or that for three years it was okay. Nothing. I don't know what what made Southern spend seventy five k on him. 
Had a really good first year in South End though. A good second year as well. Last year not that great. Was on the bench a lot. So we bought him up, bought him up them for 47k here. Played two games so far, one assist. That will be one from him, assists. Pretty much. And the same day we did sign a, a backup striker who kind of is a lot like Mark Beck. Very tall guy with a good um, good jumping reach and a good uh, header, good heading. So he's definitely going to be a good compliment to Mr. Mark Beck. Plays the way he does. Mm, we also have Dolby still there, so that's good. After that, a few days later, we did sign Jack Nolan. You're not Walsall shirt. But we signed him from Accrington Stanley. It wasn't Walsall here, so. From Reading originally. Walsall actually bought him for 110k. Didn't really got anything out of that because he left on free for Accrington. Went on loan to Southend in National League. Came back, I guess, Eckrington got relegated because they were in League 1 here. When he got back from loan, they were in League 2, so... Had some good seasons here in League 2. I was on loan in the New Saints in Wales last year. Had a really good season there with 3 goals and 5 assists in 16 games. And now joined us on 3. So a winger... Probably playing out here most of the time. Signed him on a wage of 1.1k a week. So far he's played two games with one goal and been solid. Had four goals in the preseason actually for the league kicked off. Because I played the I played two league games. This is because I wanted to set my set my squad before I actually did this video. And then one of the better signings, I think, Levi Sarn, uh, gonna bring stability to this midfield. He's probably gonna play down here, actually, as a ball-winning midfielder most of the time. Got some high wage on him, but he's gonna be worth it. I'm pretty sure. So he started off in Scunthorpe. Was there for a long time, until 2021, when he went on the free to Bradford in League 2. In the first season on this save, then he was sold to Peterborough for 54k. He's only there for a season though before he joined Burton Albion on free. He's there for two years. Had two pretty bad seasons there actually. Before he joined Accrington on free. Had two decent seasons there. Now he joined us. He's been playing two, two games so far in the league. Um, so he's going to be, um, be a good player for us, I'm pretty sure. So this was a bit of a... Bit of <laughs> this signing here was a bit of a... Oh, we took a chance, really. I, don't, I think we overpaid a lot for this guy, but... 70, 78k... For a player that's probably not going to be a starter. So I did scout him. Looked pretty decent. I sort of went for him. I mean, he'd been playing for Bolton in League 1 and stuff last year. So, but he's going to be a good compliment. I don't think he's, he's worth the 28k we paid for him. But he will get his minutes. So apart from the price tag, I think it's a good good signing. And the last signing, yes, I said Levi here. I wanted him here, but he won't play there because we. He's better to he's better here anyway. But I thought we could use him in this position. But then we got and signed Carl Winchester, a very well established player. In English football, 33 years old now. Um, and five appearances for Northern Ireland, actually. And will be a good um, a good anchorman for us here in this position. 
So he's been in a lot of clubs. Comes from Linfield, Northern Ireland. Then got to Oldham. Was in Oldham for a long time, like six years, six seasons, seven seasons. Then joined Cheltenham for free, League Two. Was there for two years. Then joined Forest Green, where there were three. And then we we'll go into. To this save there, I guess, because he went on an undisclosed fee to Sunderland. So the first season on this save, so to speak, he was in the championship, actually played some games in the championship as well. Didn't play anything here, so went to Charlton in League One for a 6.75k. Was there for three years. Have a good had a good first season and then kind of had a rough spell for two years before going on loan to Exeter, where he played the majority of their games and had a really good season in League Two. Then he went to Bolton on a free, only played had three games there last year, and now he's joining us for free and hopefully he will have a lot of more games. Probably, if he has a season like this, he had an Exeter. I'll be. Perfectly happy with that. So that's the kind of the signings we have done. So if we take a look at our our squad and the squad depth. So we still have Lemoyne in goal, obviously. He's been here for uh this is gonna be his fourth season, third season as uh as our player. We had him on loan first. And we signed him on oh this is the same season yeah we signed him mid season here so this is his third season here uh, last season was his first full season as a Darlington player and he was the best goal in the league so started off strong here as well two league games just conceded one goal so far and then we have Jack Bycroft to back him up only played one game last year and out here Levi Southern can play out here Winchester as well but it's gonna be Teddy Howe again Teddy Howe had a really good he has had good seasons since he arrived here actually seven assists for season then in league national league for season in league two he had three assists last season he had two goals and seven assists and I started really strong this year as well with a goal player of the match one time and 760. Be backing backed up by Harry Taylor. And out here we'll have Barnett, who had a really good season last year. 33 games, 11 assists. Started strong in the assist department with two assists in two games so far. So we are looking to Jordan Burnett to, to keep that up for us to actually be able to um, compete higher up the table. Central would still have Alex Touche even if he, he want to leave. But we haven't had any bids so he's still here. Had a good season when he joined last year for 7k. Started okay this year as well. And we're playing Gruel Pollard next to him. Came on free last year from Derby, I guess. Um, been on loan a lot before that, but had a, had a good last season. Uh, 31 games, one assist, a solid 6.99. Hasn't started that good this season, but we'll see how that goes. Now we have some good backups in especially Ethan Vazal. Wazel. Was on loan here from Crew. 24-25. Had a really good season. Uh, we did buy him for 4k last year. Had a good last year as well with 30 games. And now he's actually started two games. Played really good. It so might be. Gruel Pollard has to, to give him some space to, to kind of get in there. Then we have Adam Crooks as well as a backup. We have um, 
res greenage of course and um, yeah we have a lot of solid players in going and do a good job at that position um defensive midfielder as i said we're probably gonna use winchester a lot we have a few players that can go in and take that position Tuch has been playing there a lot to begin with but mcgavin's gonna be our our box to box most like not our box to box our um, our playmaker but we have already talked about that barnett can play here as well if we, if we wanted that so we pretty much talked about the central midfield is pretty much where all our strength and has happened with mcgavin louis sutton winchester um jack nolan's gonna be out here tormy gonna be out here then we have mitchell lawson is gonna be backing up on this side while hardy backs up on this side his contract will is due to end after this season uh, this is his fourth season in the club has been a solid provider for us and we obviously have even though mark beck they tell us he's the worst striker we have in the squad with 1.1 rating but one and a half star rating but we don't give a fuck because it's Mark Beck. Look at this. First season, National League North. First season we ever played. 13 goals. Next season in National League, 11 goals. 16 goals. So from this point, he actually dipped a little bit second season. But from second season up, he actually scored more every year against well harder difficulty harder harder teams to play against because we're higher up the, the pyramid so 11 goals in national league 16 goals in national league first season in league to 18 goals second season in league to 22 goals started this season two goals in two games so you know he's looking to to beat that again i'm sure and as i said we back him up with harry smith He's never been a goal scorer, but he kind of fits the the Mark Beck um, the costume. Mark Beck costume fits him very well, and we still have Sam Dolby here as well. So we have some good options there. So that's the squad we have to work with this season. So if we go into the schedule here, let's see. We had a friendly against Sunderland, which we lost. We had a friendly against East Five. Then we started to winning some games. Um, Mickleover, 3 0 victory with Dolby back and James Ball scored. Bowness United um, won that 2 1. Both goals by Mark Beck. And we had a game against Sheffield, whatever they are. Oh, Sheffield FC, okay. So Northern Premier Division 1 something. Well, we won that pretty easy with 7-0. So. <laughs> uh, Nathan Tormey scored three times, Mark Beck scored once, and Jack Nolan also scored three times. And the last... The last friendly we had this preseason was against York City. York City is in National League North. Away game, we won 3 1. Two goals by Nathan Tormey and one by Mark Beck. So we finished off strong here after two weak performances. As I said, we have played two league games, we have played three games in total actually. Here, uh, before we actually. Before I said, yeah, we're done now. We have done all the signings, our team is set until January now now it's time to do this episode so we started off at home against jewel town a game we dominated from start to finish really i think it was like 10 nil in, uh, in shots for a long time jack nolan scored in his debut will pollard 
for me advances finds an open space for nolan clinical finish and then james ball made this toe nail in the dying minutes so barnett with a good good pass up the ball to just take that run through their defense and hits it the back of the net so good game from us uh, to start the season with at home in front of two three thousand eight hundred and thirty in attendance see barnett had a great game again or again he's always having great games with an assist to that belly goal was all had a good game together with Gro pollard Gro pollard didn't have his best game but how did have a great game Tosh, Sutton, McGavin was okay. All of them were okay. No one stood out, really. No one had a good game with 7, 7.0. Torbjörn had a great game with 7.9. Uh, Torbjörn with an assist to Nolan's goal. Mark Beck had an okay game, but he didn't score. James Ball came in and scored. 7.5 rating. Um... Mitchell Lawson came in later on with 15 minutes to go. Tom Scully came in with only uh, 7 minutes to go. So a good start for us. We had a really tough EFL Cup first round against Sunderland in championship now. I think they underestimated our, us a lot because they didn't play good at all um we played very even with them like eight seven in shots we actually had more possession than they did created about the same so one one of the full times probably a fair result lever sudden scored his first goal in darlington here in the what was it like 28 minutes yeah barnett up here Finds Nolan, Nolan finds Sudden, and Sudden just whips it. Whips it home. A ni nice shot from the new central midfielder there. Lost the man of the match as well, 7.7. .7. Barnett didn't have his best game, was also okay. Girl Pollard, nah, he wasn't great, but none of our players were really great. Tormi had a, a stinker of a game, actually. I mean, we're up against Sunderland, so they held us pretty well. So this went to a penalty shootout, as you can see. They missed two of their penalties, which we um, we scored on all of ours. So it wasn't a very long shootout. We just took three pens, and they took two. So or they took three. Dykes actually scored. Lyndon Dykes. yeah i didn't think we we're gonna get away with anything from this even though we were at home um but we did and we actually advanced in the carbo cup the league cup so what do we have in the second round we are up against stockport county in the same league as us so it should be an interesting game there and then we had another uh, league game against bristol our first uh, away game in the league this season Mark Beck scored, then Adam Sr. scored, and then Mark Beck scored again right after that. No, he didn't. Actually, Teddy Howe scored on a penalty before Mark uh, made a 2 nil there. So Mark Beck scored 1-0, Teddy Howe 2 nil Adam Sr. 2-1, and then Mark Beck 3-1 just after, and then there was nothing happening after that. That's how it went down. You can take a look at the goals. Uh, Mark Beck's first goal here. It's nice to get him to, to score twice here. He didn't score anything in the first game. So good to get him on the scoring sheet. Corner from McGavin finds Beck. So that's going to be an interesting combination to see this year. Mark Beck always scores when he gets a chance to head, head, uh, head balls into the net. And McGavin has a very very good foot for it so mcgavin here finds barnett barnett whips that in back is totally free in the box and just hits that home 
Well, we can take a look at Teddy Owl's penalty. It's a pretty nice penalty. This is a pretty good good game from us here. Or a very good game, I should say. Uh, Bristol Rovers are um, predicted to be in 7th. We are predicted to be in 21st, so no one is believing us. One more time, no one is believing in us. Well, I guess they believe in us enough to not have us being relegated. Is 21st relegation? No, it's not. Here. Right. It's a good game from everyone, pretty much. Kuvel Pollard hasn't really looked like himself early on, but... Was all Barnett, how good games. McGavin, seven good games. Nolan, Beck, good games. Tommy didn't get anything out of his play, this one. But a good start for us with two wins in the league so far here in August. Moving forward, we have um, Morecambe. Morecambe is predicted in 12th or in 20th place right now. We have them at home. Coming around. Then we have the League Cup game against Stockport. That's away. Then we have Carlisle, who is dead last right now. Are predicted to be in the bo bottom. So, should be a, a doable away game. So we'll probably do these three games and all of the games in September for the next, next episode. So then we have Mansfield in the EFL Trophy or Papa John Trophy. And Mansfield are in the same league as us. Then we have Exeter in the league. Exeter is in third right now, predicted eighth. We have them away, so that's going to be a tough game. Then we have a... Another game against Stockport, this time at home, and this time in the league. Then it's Accrington Stanley, which should be a tough game. It's at home. They are predicting 13th, but they are in 5th right now. Then we finish it off in September with Cambridge United. Who must have been relegated from League 1 last year. If I'm not solely mistaken here. Yeah, they were. They were in 23rd in League 1 last year. So they were relegated from League 1, now in League 2. And are sitting in 10th right now. Not only two games played, so you know. But that's uh, that's the games we have. Then we're coming up to well, the EFL Trophy. We have Man United under 23s, Mansfield and Rockdale. So we have some interesting games around the corner. We take a look at Sky Bet League 2. Obviously, we are topping it together with Booking with a two wins so far. Uh, stages 5 1 aggregate, 4 1 aggregate for them. So, yeah, good start for us. So Mark Beck is probably tied third on because of two goals. But a way for Bradford and Jonathan Lecco for Exeter. Oh yeah, he was in Birmingham for a long time. He's He's been around uh, the Brom area because he's started out in West Brom. He was on loan to Bristol and to London and Char Charlton in London, but... Birmingham, then he went on free to MK Dons, and now in Exeter. He's been solid so far for them. Assist for Pollock in Newport County. Three assists in two games. Player of the match, yes, there is a lot of people on one here. Two clean sheets for Liam Roberts and Norman in those two games. So filed. Newcomers, right? Just conceded one goal, I suppose. They have probably not conceded any goals. As he has two clean sheets. No, zero, nil nil draw against Borough and a win against Port Vale at home. 
So it's probably gonna be one of their... Sounds like a weird, very Swedish name, Magnus Norman. Magnus isn't a very, very common British name. But he might have some Swedish parents or something. Magnus is a very, very common Swedish name. So he's Norman as a... It's a last name as well, so... If we go into the season preview... You know, people don't give us much... Much of a chance here, putting us... Odds 51 times the, the money invested in it. <laughs> at 17th place. Uh, we were fourth last year, with 81 points. I've been here in five years now, in 43 days. Key player Alex Touche, they say. Odd prospect, Louis Rudder. I agree with that, has some real potential. 16 years old striker. A new Mark Beck, I guess. Hopefully. He's not that tall, though. It's definitely not that tall. Yeah, this is pretty much... Oh, they, they expect us to play Saturn out here. I want to play how, how out here. I play... I don't play like this. I play Winchester down here. Gavin here. Then Levy out here. Levy Saturn out here. Nolan Tormey. I won't play Smith. <laughs> that's that's uh, Beck's position. Nobody's touching Beck. We went through this already, so yeah. It's pretty much how it looks. Uh, how the preseason has been going for us. So I'm pretty happy with the signings we made and how we strengthened our squad in this in this preseason. So I'm looking forward to the season. It's going to be an interesting one. Hopefully we can battle it out for, for top top three positions, I guess it is. Top three for uh, automatic promotion. That's the aim for me, anyway. I would be happy with a playoff position, but the, uh, the goal is to end top three for me. I think we... That's a, that's a good goal to have. I think we definitely have the squad for it. So, and we have a lot of more uh, depth this season. Quality, quality depth, I should say. If we take a look at our finances, we are sitting at the overall balance at two and a half million euros. That is, we have a lot of transfer budget and wage budget to, to work around with. We have eight thousand a week. We are 8,000 a week lower than the budget we have. And our original budget here was 400k and we haven't touched much of that. We touched 150k. So we have to 155k to work with. But we won't probably not touch that. We'll not touch that now. Um, we'll see in January how thing looks. If we need to strengthen, then we have some money to work with. Right? Board wants us to fight bravely against relegation. They have no faith. In the Emirates FA Cup, uh, they want us to be competitive. The competition begins in September. Oh, it begins on this in September. We are starting it in November, I guess. Carbo Cup, uh, we are in the second round now. They almost want us to be competitive in that as well. And same goes for this. So they don't really have any, any goals for us just to be competitive, I guess. Which we can be. Definitely can be. If we take a look here at our under 18s and the highest potential players, it's Louis Rudder, Kamal Grant. I haven't read registered him actually. And then it's Shioki Yude who is out on loan. Then we have Jamal Wilkins, 17 year old, winger striker. We also have Ayrton Altard, Altard, Attard, Ayrton Attard, 
uh, center back Liam Bates, the um, winger Gibbons, goalkeeper. We have quite a few here, but the most interesting ones is uh, uh, Rudder, Ude, and I would say Wilkins. After that, we see, is it, yeah, those are probably the three most interesting prospects we have. Aaron Marshall is right here in the middle. He's out on loan, so we'll we'll see what happens with him. But yeah, Rudder and and um, Ude first hand, and Wilkins as well. Wilkins have played two games so far in U18. So yeah, that's all I had for you for this one. It's a bit of a longer one, but we had a lot to go through. And we have done that, so about 40 minutes. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And hopefully I see you next time. All right. Thank you. See you on the other side.